Yet at hello, my name is LaFrenda Frank. Today we are doing an author chat here at Salina Bookshelf. But first of all, before we start asking our guest, um, the author, our local author, Serafine Yazi, let's introduce ourselves first. Let's start with you. Uh, Yate, my name is Corey Begui. I am the art director here at Salina Bookshelf. Yate, Eric, Lockhart, Yanishkia, I'm the publisher here at Salina. I'm Yate, Serafine Yazi, Yanishkia. Well, thank you. I'd like to welcome you to Salina Bookshelf. But first of all, let me go back and go over the book that we will be discussing. It is uh, The Beyaja Tragabahane, The Three Little Sheep. It is written by our local author, Seraphine Yazi, and illustrated by the talented Ryan Huna Smith, and also beautifully translated by Peter A. Thomas. So, uh, well, thank you for coming over and chatting with us. But first of all, I would like to uh, ask you about the story. Specifically, all stories, uh, you have to have characters, interesting characters. And I'd like to explore your characters in here. I know your characters are animals and human beings. Specifically, it's the sheep. Can you elaborate why the sheep and then the, um, the theme of the story? <clears throat> I picked the sheep um, because most of the Navajo Nation have a lot of sheep and also the coyote, um, ma'i. And um, so that's the reason why um, it was cultural um, relate, related to a lot of um, the, net, the net culture. So I also used brothers because a lot of us were raised with a lot of brothers, our cousin brothers, and so, um, and a lot of the characters, like the first one with the little um, overbite, um, I'm sure like a lot of, one of our cousins always had an overbite, <laughs> and they were humorous, and they were funny, and they made us laugh, so it was really neat to see the illustration, illustrator come up with that um, idea. Uh, I think that you beautifully write the story in a humorous way, and as Diné people, we're all humorous. There's a humorous story, and so I know that uh, that not only um, it is written hum uh, humorously, but pictures, illustration really does t uh, say more. And I like to ask Corey since he is specialized in that department about illustration. <clears throat> All right, um, Ryan, Ryan does a lot of, um, uh, does a great job uh, illustrating these characters with a lot of contrasting colors, and um, he really grabs the reader's attention um, based on their, um, their audience. So, so it's, um, of course, there would be little kids. He uses a lot of bright colors. He makes the characters like, really attractive and interesting for these kids to continue reading with the story. And um, he uses, he incorporates uh, a lot of Navajo life to to this um, book as well with the, the, tur the turquoise necklaces and um, different situations in the story where they even play Navajo 10 and things like that. And the question I wanted to ask you was, how did you first feel when you saw the illustrations mixed with your story when you saw the book for the first time? When I saw the book for the first time, I seen the cover page and it was just awesome because I just seen the necklaces and I seen the little book tooth guy and I seen the brothers and it just enlightened me but when he seen, when he showed me the coyote it was also wow he was amazing because he used the coyote and and the one of the best illustrations I liked was the one he was blowing and he had the bib on there so that was really um, he had his that little bracelet and his buckle <clears throat> and it really made a lot of um, um, character just totally um, pop out there so that was really nice of um, Ryan. Yeah, it really relates to Navajo too. Mm -hmm. So that's um, one of the one of the illustrations I really like. Yeah, <laughs> a cute illustration. Sorry. One of the questions I wanted to ask you, Seraphine, is as a publisher of bilingual books and specifically Navajo language books, how did you, as an author, when you were writing this fractured fairy tale, decide what elements to from Navajo culture to incorporate into your your story? Um, I incorporate it based on how, um, like if with um, the coyote giving you bad luck uh -huh. when you cross your path, and a lot of, some people are traditional and they stop and they pray and you take that repetitive 
and say your special prayer in the back of the book. Um, that was one of the cultural aspects I really wanted to incorporate because we're kind of losing that cultural aspect on the very back page where Coyote gives you bad luck if he crosses your path in the north direction. Uh -huh. So um, I just wanted a humorous way of how um, Coyote does do something, you know, to try to give us bad luck. And, and I think one thing that it does, the book does really well is it provides a, a gateway for parents and grandparents to introduce traditional culture to their children in, in a fun and sort of lighthearted way, but give those important messages at the same time. I, I want to expand that uh, too. And many of our people are moving away. And so the whole connection to cultural stories are missing, and so many people, our Navajo people, live in the big cities such as Phoenix, Flagstaff, Albuquerque, and so through books they can get cultural information, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a wonderful uh, <clears throat> thing um, as a publisher to publish authentic voices of Native uh, writers, of Navajo writers. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else that you want to add? That yeah. oh, as a teacher, um, when I was a teacher. Um, for third grade, second grade, and um, um, early childhood. I incorporated this book um, based on, on comparison and um, compare and contrast. Also, um, in third grade, I did a lot of author visits, and one school actually had um, fractured fairy tales that told the three little sheep, the three little sharks, the three little goldfish. They had all these um, fractured fairy tales at third grade and they were actually telling me all their own stories that they incorporated in their classroom, which was really neat. So um, this book can be used for teachers um, from K through high school, and also like in middle school they might have to read a passage in Navajo, um, and then they could actually um, have to speak Navajo. And then on the college level you could actually do drama, and I would like people to try to incorporate a play in a classroom that would be really nice especially in Navajo class or something it would be nice to see that so this book could be for anybody whether you're young or older uh, you're in elementary or college but it's so beneficial the act of reading is so powerful and especially uh, especially written by a, a writer from the community of that particular place uh, a knowledge of that particular area a time period and so thank you uh, for coming in and and talking to us about your book the three little sheep Seraphine Yasi thank you okay thank you sure. yeah. <laughs>